In 2021, I visited Wheeling, West Virginia for the first time and was awestruck by the wealth of historic and sometimes abandoned buildings I found to photograph there. Since my time there was limited, I vowed to return to Wheeling and more thoroughly photograph the area, but in spite of my short visit, I captured enough black and white photographs and learned enough fascinating history to publish this book. Sadly, before I got back there, the new mayor had begun a campaign of removing derelict buildings, including some of the ones featured in my book. In this video, we'll revisit a couple of vacant lots where buildings that are in my book once stood. In the center of your screen, on that corner, you can see the first of the buildings that were lost. The red brick house behind that wall has been demolished. It wasn't featured in my book, but the sign on the outer wall says Cat's Club, but I don't really know anything else about it. Now straight ahead, we see another one of the lost buildings, and this one was featured prominently in my book. It's located at 3600 Jacob Street and was built in 1891. It was originally a tailor shop operated by a German immigrant named August Helmbrecht. On the top floor was a union hall for the Ancient Order of United Workmen, or AOUW. Wheeling had a lot of mills and factories making all kinds of things and it was a hotbed for organized labor in those days. I don't know when it was last used or what was most recently located on the first floor, but my guess, based on the curtains, was that maybe it was a diner or a coffee shop or something. Helmbrecht died in 1895 and his obituary in the local paper said that he was also a member of the Hermann Lodge and of both Mozart and Teutonia singing societies as well as the AOUW. Next door to the tailor shop was the sign painting business of another German immigrant, Charles Siebold, also built in 1891. He lived in the two-story yellow house next to his business. Further down is the fire station, which I believe was built in the 1950s, but there's been a firehouse in that spot since the 1800s. In fact, Siebold and others used to complain about drunken and rowdy behavior taking place at the firehouse. As you can see in this footage from my original Wheeling video, I was fascinated by this building. Not only was I interested in some of the historic architectural details, but the cracks in texture truly intrigued my photographer's eye. And finally, before we see what's left of these buildings, here's the wall of that very first building we saw in the video on the corner. And there's the lot where it once stood. And across the street where the three-story tailor shop stood and where the sign painting business of Charles Siebold once stood. We can see more of Siebold's yellow house now that the rest of the buildings are almost gone. Oddly, they opted to leave some of the sign painting shops still standing. That's Charles Siebold's house. He filed a police complaint once when a bullet was fired through one of those second story windows, narrowly missing a young lady who was in the upstairs bedroom. These were the steps that led to Charles Siebel's sign painting business. And these steps went into a different part of the wooden structure that I believe was also part of his sign painting shop. Foundations of the 1891 Taylor Shop building have been completely removed.
This is a view of the lots from the back with the old department store visible across the street. And we'll close out the video looking at the vacant lot across the street where Cat's Club once stood. A lot of history has been lost here at this intersection. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit my website at keithdodson.com.